All this name in order, please rise and what? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda, Linda Beers. Oh, can I do a roll call? Oh, I'm sorry. Roll call. Mr. Morrow? Here. Mr. Harrington? Mr. Maryhill? Here. Mr. Gardner? Here. Mr. Depot? Here. Mr. Farabee? Here. Mr. Blades? Here. Mr. McNally? Here. Mr. Skazavava? Here. Mr. Cannon has been excused. Mr. Politi? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Monell? Here. Mr. Whitson? Here. Mr. Grinnell? Here. Mr. Connell? Here. Mr. Glowand? Here. Mr. Preston? Here. Thank you. Now, Linda, this is not a test. Thank you for having me here today. I just wanted to honor and have a certificate of appreciation for Ann Merkel. Ann Merkel has been on our Public Health Advisory Council for over two and a half decades as a chairperson. This is no easy task. Um, we meet quarterly and the documentation is extreme that she reviews for the last 25 years. She's asked to step down as the chairperson but still remains on our Public Health Advisory Council. So this plaque today is an appreciation for her. She was unable to make it, but she will be at my PAC tomorrow at 8 o'clock, I'm sorry, <laughs> later in the day, to accept this award. But I did want to give it the due attention that it deserves for her um, outstanding accomplishments. So I will just quickly read it. The Essex County Public Health Department will recognize the outstanding accomplishments of Ann Merkel and her tireless dedication to the health and well-being of the citizens of Essex County. In 1986, Ann began a collaborative relationship with public health as a member of the Essex County Professional Advisory Committee, both of which serve as the governing authority in the department. She has been instrumental to Essex County Public Health Department's mission, working to support the health of our communities by promoting health and preventing disease, injury, and disability. Whereas it's not long before her leadership abilities soared, she was elected by committee membership to the chairperson of the PAC, in fact, and she graciously accepted. Anna served as chairman, chairwoman, I'm sorry, to the Essex County PAC FAC for over two and a half decades, guiding us through some turbulent times, always keeping the mission of public health at the helm, her accomplishments include advising the agency on professional issues, participating in the evaluation of agency programs, assisting the agency in maintaining liaison with other health care providers, and chairing meetings and carrying out orderly disposition of committee business. Whereas the Essex County Public Health Department is grateful for Ann's superior ability to mentor, support, and believe in our abilities. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to resolutions. Resolutions recommended by the Human Services Committee authorizing the Public Health Department to apply for and accept a New York State March of Dimes grant in the amount of $1,500. Moved by Mr. Blades. Second. Mr. Mary, any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the Public Health Department to accept a Creating Healthy Schools grant in the amount of $100,000 with Clinton County Public Health Department for a period of five years and further authorizing the county chairman or county manager to execute a contract for the same. Moved by Mr. Connell, second by Mr. Gilliland. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the Public Health Department to apply for and accept the New York State Prevention Agenda Award in the amount of $2,000. Moved by Mr. Gardner, seconded by Mr. Morrow. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the write-off of bad debt for the Certified Home Health Agency in the Public Health Department from July 2008 to June 2013 in the amount of $152,880.18. Moved by Mr. Grinnell, seconded by Mr. Marnell. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? All right. Opposed? Opposed. Mr. Blades being opposed. Authorizing the surplus of one vehicle in the Transportation Department. Moved by Mr. Marnell. Second. Mr. 
Mr. Scott is a father. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Resolution of condolence to the family of Laura Sogal, Vermont, Department of for Children and Family Services caseworker. Moved by Mr. Blades. Second. 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 <laughs> Resolutions recommended by the Public Safety Committee, authorizing a budget amendment, increasing revenues and appropriations in the amount of $280,990 to cover costs for Belfry Mountain Tower decommissioning. Moved by Mr. Gilliland. Second. Mr. Morrow. Discussion? If none, all in favor? All right. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing a budget amendment increasing revenues and appropriations in the amount of $5,908 to cover the costs of the removal and placement of UH F links. Moved by Mr. Gilliland. Second. Mr. Gardner. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? All right. Opposed? So carried. Urging non support of A6430 Shackling Bill as unfunded mandate. Moved by Mr. Grinnell, seconded by Mr. Moore. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Amending the Public Defender's local law to include the Public Defender's Office handle family court assignments. Moved by Mr. Gilliland, seconded by Mr. Marnell. Discussion? Mr. Mann. Nope. No, I think that I think at some point it probably would make sense to have Judge Meyer talk to us about this. His position on it. That's fine. Uh, I was going to say that this resolution is a bit premature uh, to just go and amend the local law to have the public defender do the indigent uh, representation. I've got a huge file on this. I know I know all the issues. Um, there's various ways to handle this. Um, you, we need to take a, a good look at if the public defender's office would handle these family court assignments. I don't know how many new staff you would need. Uh, you have to take a look at what the cost of the hiring new people to handle the family court assignments would be, what the cost of their benefits would be uh, across the board so that you have a, a hard, hard and fast figure on that as opposed to um, in Clinton County, they do this a little bit differently. They contract out with three or four attorneys with a contract with a fixed price. Therefore, they don't have to pay the attorney's health insurance. They don't have to pay pensions for attorneys because they're not employees. These four attorneys in, in uh, Clinton County, for a fixed price, they have a fixed number of uh, family court assignments that they handle each month. If they go over that, then those family court assignments are, are handled through um, a conflict defender, which is, a, a, or no, it's well, handled through the Bar Association. So there's that, there's that option versus public defender, there's that option. Another option is uh, an assigned counsel plan as we have right now with uh, our Bar Association. However, uh, we need to tweak some of the issues like travel time, distance, where we, we can save money instead of hiring uh, assigned counsel from outside. There was a public hearing here last Wednesday relative to uh, one of the most important uh, uh, issues involved in this is eligibility. How you determine eligibility, the way the statute's written right now, is it's broad. Uh, you know, and, uh, the analogy has been made, you know, a guy who's making uh, seventy-five to $80,000 a year who's, who's uh, charged with murder, even though he has assets and money, may not have sufficient assets to, to provide himself with a, a, a viable defense, and sometimes they get assigned counsel. Um, I wasn't able to attend that public hearing. I had a four-day trial last week, and Wednesday was a full day of trial. Um, there are additional public hearings on the eligibility issue, uh, which I'd like to take a look at. And on October 5th, uh, the, county attorneys, the County Attorneys Association is going to get together uh, to uh, bat, bat around uh, options and uh, pro provide a recommendation to the state of New York for eligibility for assigned counsel. So at this juncture, to just go amend the local law would be not a wise move. You need to have everything before you. Uh, Judge Meyer would be good to come in. Judge Meyer is the, the ultimate arbiter of whether someone's assigned counsel. However, if there's an assigned counsel plan in place and that assigned counsel plan has embodied within it certain criteria 
for whether someone gets assigned counsel or not, then there's a question as to whether he's going beyond his province uh, outside of what we have as an assigned plan. So he would be good to, to hear from. Um, let's see. Franklin County has uh, Franklin County, Warren County, Washington County. Uh, all have their PDs do it. However, uh, if the PDs, if it goes over and above what the PDs do, it goes to an, uh, a conflict defender office, which Franklin County has. Clinton County, as I said, contracts it out. So there's lots of issues to look at rather than just willy-nilly go jump into this uh, amendment local law. Well, does amending the local law, doesn't that just give us the option if that's what we choose? Because I know the preliminary discussions that were had wasn't hiring a whole bunch of attorneys. It was hiring one to try to cut down on expenses. Now, I will say I had a very brief conversation with Judge Meyer, and he said he wasn't so sure that we would save money. That's what I'm saying. Um, so and I don't think one would be able to handle it. It's a lot of assigned counsel. And then the other thing that I wasn't aware of that I was educated to, that we don't pay for the attorneys for the children the state does. Right. Right. Um, and as I said, Clinton County has a contractual relationship where they have three, and I think now four, attorneys. Now these are four attorneys that, that are not on the payroll. If they were on the payroll, I'd break them. But they came up with this idea of a contract where, like, say, for $75,000 a year, you guys are doing this, times four, versus two or three full-time PDs, or however you handle it, with full benefits, you've got to analyze that. Now, I'll just regress that contract relationship. I, as I read the law, I don't believe it's legal. But they haven't been smacked yet. So, and I, I don't believe others think it's legal. But it's, it's been going on for you know, 15 years. But, you know, I just think it would be, I agree with you, Dan. I agree with Randy, I too. I don't think it makes it, you know, giving us the opportunity doesn't make that much of a difference. But we have not heard from Judge Meyer in five years. Anyway. Uh, and I think it's, I think there's more than just this issue, assigned counsel. There's also the issue for discussion of assigning attorneys and where they come from and so forth. Absolutely. So personally, and, and I don't think he has a problem with it because we never invited him, but I would think it would probably be a good idea to have the judge um, meet with us and discuss a couple of these issues which are of concern to this board uh, for purposes of at least educating us uh, in terms of his side of the bench rather than our side. Okay? Which is, which is a good one. Mr. Gillum? <laughs> I agree with Dan in, in, in that, you know, we just have to come up with a strategy because if you take a look at the trend in assigned councils and what we're paying over the last 10 years and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's just about to go completely out of control on us and we have to get a handle on it, either do it with the contractors, the contracts, I mean, just talking to um, Mr. Preston here, I mean, one full-time PD would be much cheaper than what we're paying right now than, than um, you know, in, in assigned council. But uh, if we, we, we get together and, and talk to the judge, that'd be, that would be great. Anyone else have any comments? Do we want to table this until such time we have further information? We have a move to table by Mr. Skazafava, second by Mr. Politi. Any further discussion? Oh, there's no discussion on the table. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. There were no resolutions from the Economic Development Committee. Resolutions recommended by the DPW Committee authorizing the Department of Public Works to pay the Town of North Elba $45,544.50 with 50% reimbursable grant for the Household Hazardous Waste Day from budgeted funds. Moved by. Mr. Marnell, seconded by Mr. Moore. Any discussion? <coughs> Not. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Polls? So carried. Authorizing the Department of Public Works to set up a reserve equipment account for monies received from insurance claims, scrap metal, and auction sales. Moved by Mr. Skazafala, seconded by Mr. Marnell. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Opposed? So carried. Authorizing a budget amendment increasing revenues and appropriations in the amount of 37000 for Essex County Soil and Water DEC Stormwater Fund. Moved by. 
Mr. Mario. Second. Mr. Morrow. Discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the purchasing agent to award bid to further construction for concrete repairs in the amount of $54,900 with $14,900 to come from contingency. Moved by Mr. Marnell. Second. Anyone? Mr. Mayor here. Thank you. Any, any further discussion? Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? So carried. Dan? I just want to clarify that you can see that the work is going on. And the reason the work is going on is because the portion of it was budgeted and approved in the, in the budget um, that you, as a board, voted to adopt. So that work started based upon that because you don't need a resolution once it's been approved by the board. The additional 14000 which we were not aware that you were going to do, is what you're approving now. Mr. Kirby? Question, Dan. Do you know how many lineal feet that was? I don't have the exact number. Chris is here, but I'm not sure if it was either. I'll call, I'll call you later, Chris. Right. Just trying to get a grasp of cost per foot. Mr. Marnell? Yeah. The, will they treat that with a salt uh, deterrent that agent, hopefully? And, uh, that's, yeah. that's how we do in-house, but yeah. the yeah. agent here says that. So yeah. I need to walk. To get Chris it. is telling me they are, yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, Dan. Just want to add to the end of that, authorizing the change order to be executed by the county manager. I know it's after the fact, but so we'll authorize the change order. So we're good? Yep. Okay. Okay, dude. Okay. Um. Recommended by resolutions recommended by the personnel committee, authorizing the enforcement of the collection of occupancy tax for vacation rentals as allowed in the occupancy tax law effective January 1st, 2016. Moved by Mr. Marihu, seconded by Mr. Grinnell. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Gilliland. Uh, just clarification on on how we're going to execute this as far as you know, we need extra hours, extra people. Um, with, is, is it just going to be Wayne Taylor? At this point, it is just anticipated to be Wayne Taylor. Um, I know for a lot of board members that haven't been here, um, the initial occupancy tax, there was no enforcement officer until just recently. And um, I guess the important part of this is, if there is anything further needed along the lines of enforcement, the tax will pay for it as it does now. And, and thank you. Dan, you want Just as a clarification, I did talk to Wayne about this, and he does anticipate that it would be additional paperwork, but what we talked about was having Mike Diskin's office help us with that paperwork um, so that Wayne could still do it um, without having additional help for himself. And I guess if I, if I may, just um, do it, are we planning to have a public, you know, a public notice, a public relations uh, uh, campaign to let all the homeowners know that they're going to be paying tax on them. Absolutely. So, so, uh, so uh, it, as I read this, I want to amend this. Is, is this enforcement or is this modification of the law? I, 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 it well, says what? authorizing the enforcement. What, why would it say that? Okay. Um, as I stated, the local law states that um, a hotel or motel is any facility offering lodging on an overnight basis. And then it goes on to qualify that, uh, including, but it doesn't say not, but uh, it's not ex accepting anything, including uh, bed and breakfast and tourist facilities. So the current local law, in my opinion, uh, because uh, vacation rentals are for overnight lodging and they're regarded as tourist facilities, um, it's my opinion that we have been, ha we have had the authority to uh, uh, levy the tax against vacation rentals all along in the local law. So that's what this is stating. What I would recommend that we do is that we amend this resolution. Um, I think you want to include that tourist enhancement fund, right, Randy? And so we'll get it all done in one fell swoop. Um, or, or, no. Are we not? Well, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know how clean that is. Well, but what I would do, what I would propose is that we do amend our local law yes. to include um, the definition of hotel and motel. And what I've recommended before uh, is, uh, and this isn't going to change things, it's just what this does is it gives everybody uh, notice of exactly what we're doing. Well, I understand that, but the enforcement provision is already in place. Right, right. Uh, the, uh, I, but what, what, what shouldn't say enforcement. It should no, say no. modification of the law. Okay, well, we could do that. But the enforcement, because we haven't enforced it in the past, it just shows that we would enforce against vacation rentals beginning January 1 at because to give yeah. everybody a little bit. I understand that. But the point is, if you modify the law, the enforcement's already in place. Right. So the authorization is not enforcing what what we're already we already can do. Right. Well, I think what, I didn't draft that, but I think what they're getting at there is uh, that the January 1, the provisions, are the, the, the taxing of, of vacation rentals and those types of things will occur. Yeah, I, I just didn't know whether that was the right word you this, wanted. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't draft it, so. All right, thank so, you. So, uh, what I would do is uh, we amend this to state that we'll revise uh, and amend the local law to include uh, vacation rentals. Um, and that the enforcement with respect to vacation rentals and anything similar to that won't begin until January 1st, 2016. Uh, and then uh, I'll do this as a separate resolution at the end. I just think if you do that, Dan, it, it, it clarifies it and, and does not open us up to a potential lawsuit because of semantics. Um, as the definition. So, yeah. no, make, I agree. Make That's it the, clear and move on. Exactly. So, here's what we should, the resolution should, should read this. Resolution amending the current hotel, hotel occupancy tax uh, by including more detailed definition of vacation rentals, campgrounds, tourist homes, and convention centers, and uh, the enforcement of the tax as against those particularly described items will not occur until January 1st, 2016. So you're recommending that we amend that to read that now? Yes. And Roby's point is well taken. And also, as I said, I believe we have that authority, but I don't, this is making it clear to everybody. Okay, so the county attorney has suggested that we amend the resolution. Amend the local law. The local law. Somebody needs to. Somebody needs to move it. You move it. I'll move it. I'll move it for. I have another question on, on the definition. Tommy Skazafama, seconded by Mr. Grinnell. Discussion on the amendment. Yeah, I didn't realize the campgrounds. I thought we had discussion on that. The campground. You're actually bringing in your own unit. You are. You're leasing a piece of property. Um, so there is a differentiation in the campground definition, which I would make would be campgrounds where if it's a mo motor home that you bring in with you or a tent or a trailer, those would not be taxed. The but camp campgrounds that have actual buildings on right, okay. them would be, would, would have a units. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Farrington. Mr. Chairman, in, in the negotiation or not negotiation, discussions with Roost, um, will there be an individual contract with the re for the reimbursements back to the, each town per town or will it be just a county agreement to be dispersed back to each town? Will it be a town roost agreement or a county roost agreement? Um, I would do both just as a belt and suspenders so there's okay. no, no uh, misunderstanding with roost okay. the way our current uh, enabling legislation reads. But Further discussion, Mr. Marnell. Yeah, do we talk enforcement? So, if someone doesn't charge the uh, the tax, uh, the Wayne goes there. What? Uh, who do we? What do they face in it for a penalty? Uh, that work? If it's proven that they have uh, that they have been not ch uh, paying the tax or illegally withholding the tax or keeping the tax, it can be a misdemeanor under our law, under our local law. We have uh, we have one place right now that Wayne came in to see me last Thursday that we're going to go after. Uh, it appears uh, I can't say they are, but uh, at this juncture it appears that they're a little light in their reporting. Not that they're not reporting, but their figures are light compared to past years. Whereas everybody else's figures in Lake Placid have gone up. Any further discussion on the amendment? 
If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Now we vote on the regular yeah. resolution. The, the resolution as amended. Resolution as amended. Someone want to move it? Mr. Gilliland, Mr. Marigue, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you. For Champlain Valley Waterfront Improvements in an amount not to exceed $290,923. And execution of the MOA with the Towns of Crown Point, Scroom, Wilmington, Newcomb, Ticonderoga, and Osceola River Association for consultant planning and design services, education and outreach, water quality monitoring, river restoration, and the purchase of supplies and materi materials incident to the various projects. Moved by Mr. Harrington. Second by... Mr. Grinnell, any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the conveyance of Hurricane Irene buyout properties acquired by the County of Essex pursuant to the Federal Hazard Mitigation Grant Program administered by the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services to the various towns in Essex County where these properties are situated by deed and reservation of a conservation easement to the county. Moved by Mr. Whitson, second by Mr. Marion. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Resolutions from the Finance Tax Reduction Mandate Relief Committee authorizing the purchasing agent to award bid for bond council services to Hawkins, Delafield, and Woods. <coughs> Moved by Mr. Moore, second by Mr. Skazafava. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, now. Uh, can the town uh, use the same contract then? Uh, yeah, there will be a piggyback in this one. Yeah, you bet. Yes. Oh. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Authorizing payment to the New York State Association of Counties in the amount of 15000 as host county for the 2015 fall conference to be held in Lake Placid with funds to come from contingency. Moved by. <coughs> Mr. Gilliland. Second. Mr. Grinnell. Any discussion? Mr. Fair. I uh, just want to let you know, the entire board know that uh, within this contribution, uh, all members of the board, department heads, are invited to the conference. And uh, within this, the association is waiving the registration fee, which I believe is $190 per person. So. Um, it's a gift back for the gift that we're giving them. So I urge everyone to, not only for the educational value, but to, you know, to attend and show the support from Essex County. Any further discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the purchasing agent to award bid to C.J. Brown Energy for NYSERDA services under an energy performance contract in an amount not to exceed $8,289 and further authorizing the county chairman or county manager to execute a contract for the same. Moved by Mr. Skazafaba. Second. Mr. Mary. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Mr. Gilliland is opposed. Thank you. Authorizing the Essex County Chairman or County Manager to execute an agreement between the County of Essex and the Sheriffs of Essex County Civil Service Employees Association, Local 100, Unit 816, for the formation of Essex County Sheriff's Bargaining Unit. Moved by Mr. Morrow. Second by Mr. Gardner. Discussion. Mr. Skazafaba. Yeah, can, um, I, I can see the need for this, but I'm just wondering if, um, what if social services comes in and says, you know what, we're, we do, a, it's apples and oranges, what we do compared to buildings and grounds. <coughs> Highway comes in and says, we're on a four-day work week over here, we get a lot of overtime for snow, so on and so forth. I mean, are eventually we going to end up negotiating contracts with each individual department? 
Um, I don't believe that would be the case. Again, I think that because the positions that are within those, again, you, when you're talking about a separate bargaining unit, you really have to be talking about titles that are exclusive to that bargaining unit. Um, and what happens is when you're in DSS, you have account clerks, so you have account clerks everywhere, those kinds of things. But when you're talking about this particular case, you know, you only have titles that are related to the sheriff's department. Um, well, let's, but, uh, let's yeah. use DPW, <laughs> heavy equipment operators. Yeah, potentially a DPW could be a separate unit. There's no, there's no disagreement with that. And again, I, I have to tell you that you certainly could take the position that you don't agree and that you um, want it settled by PERB, but ultimately all PERB's going to do is look at it and say, did the membership, um, did the, the petitioners um, carry out the petition correctly, did, the, did they hold the vote correctly, and was there an affirmative vote, and if so, the PERB is probably going to approve it. Yeah, that, that but I, I have a suggestion here, Tom, if you yeah. want. Um, we can, um, if you want to table this for now, um, I'll go back and I'll get with Dan and we will kind of get together and, and lay out whatever scenarios there happens to be. Is, is, this, is this something that the entire union membership has to agree to? Uh, no, it's only the bargaining, it's only the group that wants to split. I remember years ago, what kind of disturbs me about this is that this is something that was tried at the Horace Nye and they were told they couldn't do it. Well, again, um, here's the tricky thing about this. Yeah. Management can absolutely not play any role in the process. Right, I understand. Um, it's, a, it's a violation of the Fair Labor Standards if we even suggest the process to the membership. Um, it, it's an exclusive right of the, bar, of the employees to form whatever bargaining units they choose to do and management cannot participate or advise or in, in any way um, be a part of the process. So I, it, I think clearly there are times when membership may have information that's incorrect or that they don't understand properly, I, and management certainly could help them with that, but we are prohibited from doing that. I, I, I don't disagree that it's probably something that's needed, but I can just see this taken off um, because you have so many departments out here and so many different classifications and I mean, next it could be the uh, the emergency call takers um, you know who could say you know our positions are entirely different than, than any other position in the county uh, could be so I'm just wondering how the membership as a whole feels about yeah, the sheriff's department going out yeah, and unfortunately we can't ask I know, I understand. Matt, you want to comment on this? Uh, I agree with, with Dan, Tom, um, on, on two fronts. I mean, the process uh, is if, if they petition uh, and everything is done properly, PERB is pretty much going to grant that. They have the right to unionize should they, should they wish to. The second uh, point that Dave, Dan made about uh, the, the sheriff's department, the corrections officers, they are unique. They do have their own special provinces and their sp own sp uh, special duties, special concerns. Um, so they are a bit different. I see, I see how you carry it forward. Uh, DPW is probably a best example. The rest are pretty much under the same umbrella. But I don't believe we can prevent it from happening. And I, I think, uh, you know, and this is only my opinion, but down the road I think it would be better to deal with them outside of the entire membership because of the differences in issues. And we may be able to uh, reap some benefit from, uh, by negotiating with each of these entities in separately. Mr. Blake, you were next. Uh, actually, my question was, what is the benefit to the county uh, by recognizing a second uh, bargaining unit? There really is. I, I don't know that there's any benefit other than we're negotiating with a smaller group, at, at, you know, as opposed to a larger group. Um, they really... There really isn't in the way the PERB laws is, is, are, are set up. It's not intended to be any benefit to management. It's, it's strictly a, an employee benefit, so to speak. Yeah. So if, if, if this body uh, elected not to vote in favor of this, what's the next procedure? It goes back to PERB, and if everything was done correctly, PERB would overrule us and grant the membership. 
So, okay. As far as, as far as benefits, I don't think there's an immediate benefit right now. But if you're negotiating with two separate entities, uh, let, let's say we're not, we don't divide them, and sheriff's department comes up with an issue that really is germane to sheriff's department. They want it, and we don't. We're, for some reason, we don't segregate it out. We don't do it right, and the rest of the membership benefits from that, or they get, or they kind of latch onto it and say, ah, yeah, and then then we have an impasse. I think because of the uniqueness of the sheriff's department. Um, we can either have benefits or not benefits, you just don't know, but at least the issues discussed with one bargaining group versus the other are segregated and you can, you can do some decent bargaining, if that makes any sense. It doesn't. It doesn't, okay. What's the cost factor? Well, well, we don't know. You don't know. I mean, you could be benefited by it. It's, it's just that the, the issues are so different. Right now, I mean, I don't see, you know, like there's no immediate benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah again, if, I don't know about contract costs, but right now you're not paying a negotiator anyways that Dan and I do it um, through the, the negotiation committee. So you're, at this point, not paying anything different. I'll move the table. <laughs> do we have a second the table? Second. Was that you, Mr. Politi? I'll second it. Okay. I thought, you know, I don't understand the discussion. I have the legal right to do this. So we have we have a motion to table. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All in favor. I'm agreeing. Yeah, yeah. If you're opposed, please raise your hand. I didn't mean to second the table. I thought it was okay. Seconding the table. Okay. Too late. These, these are the hands that are opposed to the table, is that correct? Yeah. All right. So the table. The table. Keep your hands up. Did you go? I have 11. Right. Table fails. So I'm saying 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. So the table fails. The table fails. So we're, we're still in discussion. Mr. Collins, you're next. Yeah. Well, this may not be a legitimate reason, uh, but in my mind it is. Um, I'm opposed to this. And understand we'll probably go to lose it but we'll send it back to perm i've sat on the negotiating team since i've been here it takes a lot if we've spent a lot of time negotiating contracts if we have to do this for two three four uh different unions uh you're gonna have the negotiating team negotiating year round practically and you know when the county went what are we down to around 400 employees and splitting off these small units it's still going to take the same amount of time to negotiate these contracts as it does with a with a larger group so you know i just don't think we have the uh the size county to um to legitimize having these small groups break off so i understand it's going to purpose out of our hands but I want to set the Mr. Bleedy, John Hanson, else you want to add? Uh, you were next in line. No. I think I got there in time. Mr. Morrow. Well, the reason I moved it, because being chairperson of the labor management negotiation team, I checked into it very thoroughly. And from what I found out, is like Dan and Dan said, we can't stop it. They want it. We'll lose if we vote against it eventually. And from what I also found out, they have some legitimate reasons for it. Because I did do some inquiries about it. And although, yes, we're going to have more to do, but it's needed. And we're starting out on the right foot because we're being very reasonable by approving it. We can't stop it. Mr. McNeil. No, I, I just uh, agree. There's nothing really we can do about this. It's their right, and uh, just prolonging this is not going to do anybody any benefit. Mr. Grinnell. Uh, I'm opposed to it in principle, but in reality, it's already happened in Ticonderoga. We have three bargaining units we deal with. There's no way to prevent it. Uh, okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Skazapa. Are there any other counties that where their sheriff's department is a separate bargaining unit? In fact, most of them are. They are? Okay. Yeah. Most of them are separate. Right. Between the sheriffs and regular units. Thank you. Anything further? If not, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Aye
Those opposed? Aye. Opposed? Would you please raise your hand? Motion carries. Thank you. Just for your information, from a negotiating standpoint, probably what we would attempt to do is negotiate. We're at a starting point now, but we'd probably try to do staggered years so that we weren't negotiating two contracts at the same time. Okay. Under Ms. Approving a subrecipient agreement between Essex County and the Housing Assistance Program of Essex County for a 2014 housing award bid project number 382 WS 355-14. $35 from funds received from the New York State Office of Homes and Community Renewal Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program. Moved by. Mr. Moore, seconded by Mr. Merrigan. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Approving a subrecipient agreement between Essex County and the Housing Assistance Program of Essex County for the 2014 Home Buyer Grant. Bearing project number 382H0350-14 and the amount of $300,000 from funds received from the New York State Office of Community Renewal Small Cities Community Development Block Grant. Mr. Moore, seconded by Mr. Grinnell. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Polls? So carry. Resolution authorizing the replacement of Furnace Bridge over Black River Town of Westport project and further authorizing the purchasing agent to award bids to the Fort Miller Company Incorporated for the precast bridge for the Furnace Bridge project in the total amount of $237,178 and to award the bid to John W. Sheehan & Sons for the installation of the Furnace Bridge in the total amount of $617,000 and further authorizing the county chairman or county manager to execute contracts in the above referenced Furnace Bridge Project, which funds are to come from the bridge bond. Moved by Mr. Marnell. Second by Mr. Morrow. Discussion? There is no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the project for the Bartlett Road Bridge replacement project in the town of Keene and further authorizing the purchasing agent to award a bid to Adirondack Concrete to perform site and substructure work for the Bartlett Road Bridge replacement project at a cost of $249,900 with funds to come from the 2014 bridge bond. Moved by Mr. Marnell, seconded by Mr. Politi. Any discussion? Mr. Mann. Uh, just as always, uh, authorizing the county manager and or county uh, chairman to execute a contract for the work. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. <coughs> authorizing the big bridge projects that have been approved and completed using funds from the 2009 and 2014 bridge bond monies. <laughs> Moved by Mr. Moore, seconded by... Mr. Morrow, discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the chairman or county manager to execute a grant of easement <coughs> from the Niagara Mohawk Power Corporation over premises known as 13 Fish Hatchery Road in the town of Crown Point for the purposes of providing a pole line and high and low voltage electric current to the property owned by the town of Crown Point. Moved by Mr. Harrington, seconded by Mr. Moore. Discussion? I just have a question. Mr. Manning? Uh, because of the exigencies of cir circumstances with respect to trying to get this easement for the town of Crown Point, we had to act quickly. Uh, there was a power pole down that had uh, uh, cut the power to the uh, town of Crown Point water. Or was it town of Essex? I'm saying Crown Point. Town of Essex uh, water building. Uh, so we declared a state of emergency. Point. It is Crown Point? Yes, okay. yeah. The county has declared a state of emergency, uh, and we did execute that easement, and it has been sent to the power company. Um, there's no harm in passing this resolution, but uh, we did it by emergency. Any further discussion? Mr. Harrington? The, the town of Crown Point's uh, water districts were in a critical situation. Uh, the power was uh, 
knocked out of, uh, by several waves of the, the uh, severe storm. Uh, National Grid uh, was very difficult to work with in getting them to come to survey the situation at first. When we did get them to show up through all kinds of means, um, they were very cooperative and got us functioning under an emergency situation, but did state that we had four days to correct it because the lines were on the ground. Um, this is how this uh, resolution transpired to where it is today. So I appreciate uh, the cooperation that we received from the Any further discussion on the resolution? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Oh, Bear with us, we're three of them. circling the wagons. Do you want me to just read what I want? Yes. There's uh, more resolutions from the floor. Everyone has a copy on their desks. Resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to go out and bid an award for en engineering services for the Realm Dam project. Moved by. Mr. Depot, seconded by Mr. Mario. Discussion. This is the Rome Dam project. This is, this, is, this is under the community rising program. The um, found of uh, Jay and Keen. Um, this was the, uh, part of that $9 million awarded by the governor to the towns of Jay Keene um, for community reconstruction. Um, um, so, so that's where that um, particular project is out of. So can you just clarify what we're moving here again? You're moving... Um, to work bed, right? That's my trip. Mike, you want to come up and explain this? As we go through it, so everybody knows what we're doing. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, as Mr. Palmer stated, this is part of the $9 million that Jay and Keene received. Um, we, we've got a couple of the projects out there being engineered currently, and, and this would be procure those services so that we can come up with a plan on how to remediate the issues with that dam, and that is owned by the town of Jay. So we, we need to uh, procure engineering services. That's what the, the bid should be for okay. the and this is just in Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on this resolution? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. from Surplus Forest Project to transfer to the Nutrition Building Renovation Project for the walk-in cooler and freezer and associated engineering costs in the amount of $100,000. Moved by. Mr. Moore, seconded by. Mr. Mario, discussion. Mike, you want to... Yeah, I think Ms. Palmer knows enough about this too, but essentially we have to remediate the coolers over at the nutrition facility. Um, we're either going to have to, we're going to have to do that regardless if, if we're able to renovate the entire facility or not. 
the cost, when we remediate those, those coolers, we no longer have the existing coolers in service, which presents a huge problem. We need to remain operational uh, while some of this work continues. The cost per rental of coolers are about $2,000 a month. Uh, my recommendation, I think, I think Dan would probably agree, is that it would make more sense to go out to bid and get a price on actually building our own coolers because at the end of the day, we're going to need to do that anyhow. I'm guessing that the cost of rental would exceed the cost of purchasing our own. So that's why we're looking at doing that right now. Further discussion, Mr. Marnell. Yeah, these coolers, would, would they be independent? They bring them, to all, they have them all set up and you put them on a concrete slab and put an entry door into them? I mean, some are Yeah, the, the way the current plans call, we do have some preliminary uh, <coughs> specs on this. They're going to be on, in the interior of the building, so we won't have to pour additional concrete, Mike. So there will be, the access will be from the inside of the facility. We will have to remove part of the existing cooler, which is non operational. In, in order to complete the task. We're not anticipating that the, that the cost is going to be that high. Right now, we absolutely have to complete the cooler. There's no, there's no uh, options there. The reason why I'd like to bid the freezer out separately, it may be cheaper for us to do them at the same time, then go back again in six or eight months and, and try to complete the freezer project. So we'll have a decision to make at, at the conclusion of the bid. The only thing I'm concerned if, if we did or do someday build a another facility elsewhere. If they were outside the building freestanding, then they could be moved to the new facility without tearing them, you know, probably if it's built in, you're, you're in, it's probably going to stay there. Yeah, we, we did kind of look at that, and, and truthfully, we, the pricing that we got for uh, building new outside um, was almost $1.8 million. Um, the pricing we got for building a new kitchen onto the existing um, was around 1.1 1 .1 or something. Yeah, 1.1 1 .1 to 1.3. Um, and I think we can get that down as well. But, but ultimately, it appears that the most cost-effective way to accomplish this is to rehab the existing space. So that's the reason for this. Now, the mold issue obviously has to be taken care of one way or another. But in order to do the mold, you have to literally pull the cooler that's there apart. You got to rip all the walls out to get to the interior parts of it because the mold has spread that far. So, in <clears throat> saying that, if we did, if we didn't purchase and get a new cooler ready, um, they would be shut down um, once we did the mold remediation. So, Mr. Stazapa, on the on the coolers and the freezer, are there any um, did we check any incentives out there through NYSERDA for these new high energy, high efficiency? Um, Refrigeration units, and there potentially is. I, that's a good thought. I absolutely know they're doing that. They're doing blowing, blowing insulation in them now. I mean, there's a lot of changes yeah. from, from the old coolers we remember. So I just we would we would certainly research that yeah. during the, the bid process. Yeah. Further discussion, Mr. Mall. I just like the record to reflect that. Thanks to Phil Sharkowski and Dan Palmer. And I'm looking at this going forestry money. Where do we have forestry money? And then I remembered wow. that Phil and Dan heard about we had over $400,000 from years ago, many years ago, that was taken in and put into account that was never touched. And to spend that money, you're only going to spend it once because you're not having it again. But i got to say, I support this because this, and Mike just said it, this is a program that's very much needed for the agent in our county. And if we don't do this, we won't have that program, the meals program. So this, I will support this. But look at that money wisely because it's not coming back after. But this is a good, wise program. Mr. Grinnell, uh, my question kind of ties into Jerry's comments. I was under the impression that the forestry money was dedicated to forestry. I can answer. How, are, Mr. We, how are we accessing it probably is. Money it the probably is. As part of this resolution, I'll draw the necessary paperwork to get that out of that forestry in, into this for this purpose. Again, the board can always create a fund based upon whatever conditions that they want, but you, as a board, can always change that. So, 
before regular board, I'll have all that. So, so the board is aware that we're changing the forestry fund. Well, I can tell you that the, the original forestry fund that was created was done in the 80s. Um, so I'm not sure. You know, it, it was just set up a long time ago, and the money was never touched. There's almost 500,000 that was never touched. Mr. Scott's a problem. you got to have trees to put a building up. But anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I agree with Jerry. I think that this, you know, this money was bought. These these properties were purchased with taxpayers' money dollars years ago. And I think that, I think this is putting the money to good use because there are a number of citizens, and there will be in the future. Um, the, you know, this program, nutrition program, isn't going to go anywhere. We talked about um, stopping the delivery at one point. We remember the uh, the outcry that we had. So I think it's a good use of the money. I think it's a wise use of it. And um, the whole intention here was that residents of this county benefit that, um, you know, that originally made that investment with their tax dollars into these properties. Yeah. The, the other thing, and I want to point out why, why we recommended this to begin with. Um, we applied for the $400,000 grant. Um, in order to enhance the grant, you have to be able to demonstrate that you can get more funds without raising the levy. So by using what is essentially a reserve account of $500,000, we may be able to, and I'm anticipating that we will, be able to leverage another $400,000 in grant. So, um, because that increases the value of your application because you are not going to the levy for additional money. Yeah, Mr. Palmer couldn't be more right. Anybody who's done an application through HUD, it's all about the direct benefit to the clientele, which in this case is the um, elderly persons in our county. So if we can demonstrate that by them giving us 400000 that we're not going to have to uh, have an impact on those people that are receiving the service, the, the better off we're going to be. Mr. Morrow. Yeah, and by using this money, we're not taken away from what it originally was put away for because we've got enough money there. The board's already approved, and all our county-owned timberlands in different towns and woodlots we're already on, in the process of getting them all inventoried and the boundary lines marked that haven't been done in the past. And we're still going to be, as we're doing the sale, we got one coming up shortly, we're still going to be putting a percentage of that money away to help pay for the market and, of, and market and market into that timber. That's correct. <coughs> all in favor of the resolution? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. As a second part of that, I also need to have the resolution authorizing the purchase agent to bid an award to purchase an installation of those walk-in coolers and freezers um, according to the BES projects. Moved by Mr. Gilliland, seconded by Mr. Morrow. Any discussion? Not. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Um, the last one that I have is um, resolution to accept the grant for project number 4085002 from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for the William Petro Dam Flood Mitigation Project. Moved by Mr. Skazafava, seconded by Mr. Grinnell. Discussion? If not, all in favor? All right. Opposed? So carried. That also includes the uh, uh, Increase the revenue appropriation, Judy, below the uh, budget amendment. Yeah, that's what the resolution would be, would be to and to uh, do the budget amendment necessary. Okay. Oh, you have to? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Mr. Grinnell, did you want to? Yes. Have a discussion? Yes. Um, on your desk today is a copy of a resolution that was adopted by Ticonderoga. Uh, it was brought forward to the county. Uh, there was a request for this uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, I sat and spouted off about the tax cap and the fact that it was actually less than 1% this year and how that was going to impact all of our communities in our county. 
and uh, Mr. Creston and, and uh, Mr. Farabee suggested that that I come forward with a resolution uh, reflecting what I felt we needed to do, and that's where this document comes from. It's not a criticism of the state or any officials of the state. It is a request for assistance for communities that are within the blue line of the Adirondack Park. We fall under special regulations because we are the park. And quite frankly, I'm not sure that all of our senior officials in the state are really aware of some of the restrictions uh, that having a park place on us. And this is merely an attempt to bring some of those to their attention and request their assistance uh, from the state as a whole in the financial endeavors that it takes to, to sustain the park. And I just feel it's being unfairly placed on the residents of the park. And this is a, a, a request for assistance from the state, the governor, and the legislature. And hopefully we can bring this forward at our next regular meeting uh, for adoption. And I would encourage all my colleagues to take it back to your individual towns and, and adopt it on the local level. I will say that I had asked Mr. Grinnell a month ago when he brought this up to come up with a resolution, the wording, um, and so on and so forth before he brought it back to the board. He's done that, and I will say that I've read this when it was sent a couple weeks ago, and it was written very well, and it's very respectful, and I certainly um, will, will support it. Um, any further discussion on this, Mr. Farabee? Yeah, Bill, I, and, and Mr. Chairman, I, I have to agree. You know, I, I've read the re resolution, and as Bill stated, it doesn't, it's no attack on the tax cap, it's no attack on the governor, it's no attack to uh, condemning the tax cap. It's only making, you know, bringing more awareness to what it is doing to us as communities and, and communities within the blue line. Um, and, it, and it hits everything I feel right on target. I mean, we're, uh, you know, more and more state land, and, and else we, we all know that, uh, you know, when the state acquires land, their portion of tax paid back is not at the same rate that uh, our constituents are, and it's a, you know, further cost on our revenue. So I think it's tasteful. Uh, I don't know if you can afford it, Mr. Riddell, but you look at a good job. Does the board feel comfortable moving this today, or do you want to wait for the full board? Move by Mr. Marnell, seconded by Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Second. Are you now? Second. Everybody comfortable with that? Okay. Very good, Mr. Dan, what is the actual cap right now? Is it uh, 0.73 right now? We haven't done the final calculations. What will happen is we'll have to go in and any adjustments that will have to be made. Because if you have an increase in assessed value overall, then that does. I understand all that, but, but it's cost. Of, what's the cost of living? What's the 0.73? 0.73. Yes. And, and once we make some adjustments based upon the increase in assessed value, that may, our cap may actually be lower than that. That's the final calculation. It's impossible to... Okay, anything else? I think Mr. Marnell. Yeah, I'd like to ask for a resolution of condolence to the family of uh, Dan Riggins, Schoon Lake. Uh, Dan and his wife, Kathy, have only been residents of Schoon Lake for 15 years or maybe even less. But he touched the lives of almost everybody in the town of Schoon, and uh, his services had to be held at the Catholic Church, and it was overcrowded. People couldn't get in. He was involved in every civic organization, and uh, a real gentleman. And uh, we okay. had a big loss in town. We get a unanimous second, please. Second. Thank you. What was his last name, Mr. Riggins? Riggins? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Gilliland. Um, as I said the last the last meeting, um, as a member of the board of directors of the uh, uh, Essex County Farm Bureau, we're putting on 
So you can see outside under the red, red and white tent there, I've got a numbers of farmers and stuff um, that, want to, uh, that, I, that want to interact with us as the lawmakers here in Essex County. I would uh, highly enjoy everybody to go out there and, and take a look and talk to them because they got a story to tell. Um, in Essex County, we have 261 farms, uh, according to the 2012 Census Agriculture. That in 2012, it generated $12 million in sales, $2.2 million in wages. Um, I don't know if you, as many of you know, there's a new energy agriculture in Essex County. We seem to be almost the epicenter in New, in, up in New York for it, um, kind of dwarf, almost dwarfing what, what Vermont has been doing with young farmers coming in. Um, in and around where I live, we've, you know, in excess of 10 farms have popped up since I came here uh, after retiring from the Navy to come farm. So you have this old geezer sailor coming up here to, to farm. I've got uh, two friends, two senior people in the, uh, in the U.S. State Department who are retiring. And they have bought, what, bought, bought one farm in Chesterfield, Sergastrom's and they're going to farm up there. Another one, an intern, a 53-year-old intern who works at the State Department at the Embassy in Norway who came up and, and interned with me today and is buying a farm in Skazafavis town. Um, as Jerry knows, you know, in Mace Chasm, there, there, there's, there, there are amazing things happening with people. And there's young people come, coming in, reversing that trend. They're coming here to take part in agriculture. Agriculture right now, I think, in Essex County is probably a bright spot. It's, 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 it's a growing sector of the economy, and we, we don't have grow, a lot of growing sectors that we have. So I, what we wanted to do was have them come, talk to you, eat some goodies, take a look what they have, and interact with them. Um, I have a sampling of everything from, from you know, the, the traditional dairy, commercial farmers, ma maple operations, young CSAs, and things like that. So please take the time, take 10 or 15 minutes, go out there and, and, talk, and, and talk to them, see what they have to offer, because I think this, 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 is, this is a bright spot in the future of Essex County, and uh, I, I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Is there anything else to come before this committee? Mr. Harrington. Yes, I want to reiterate everything that Mr. Gilroy said. Also, I want to point out that Gunnison's Orchard is here today from the Crown Point. Yeah, I do. Uh, that's one of the oldest orchards in the country, uh, and they have managed to stay afloat by a constant innovation. So uh, that's something that you really need to take a, a close look at. Also, um, on a totally different subject, uh, the DEC has announced that the Crown Point State campsite will close Labor Day. Um, last year, this Board of Supervisors endorsed a resolution requesting that DEC reconsider the closing date of the Crown Point State campsite from Labor Day to Columbus Day. The popularity of camping has increased as recently demonstrated by state statistics that were in the uh, local newspapers. And yet, the state campsite in Crown Point is scheduled to close. Uh, for further information, the town's campsite is filled to capacity and has a waiting list. I'm not sure what the campsites are in uh, Mariah, but I assume that there are some direct uh, similarities to the town's campsite. We, I, we, we count on those transients coming from Crown Point because they close. So we, we're not able to accept any of the old properties. We're filled. I wish that DEC would leave their decision. I know this is late in the day, but we had re uh, um, endorsed the resolution in 2014 in regards to this. So if we would entertain another resolution uh, requesting that the campsite remain open until uh, uh, Columbus Day. You realize that this campsite is immediately uh, uh, um, 
adjacent to the bridge which is has its own calling card it is adjacent to the, uh, the uh, historic forts which also has a calling card all on its own i do not believe that the state has a, um, a, a realization as to the value of this area so i would take it you're looking for a resolution of this. I am. Second it? Second. 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 Thank you. Mr. Grinnell. Along those lines, uh, it's not just the St. Frederick campsite. It's several state campsites in upstate New York. And I just, I, you know, private campsites are all remaining open. It's only the states that are closing. If the state wants us to be tourist oriented the season doesn't end on Labor Day we should make them well aware of that and not just at St. Frederick we should make the resolution to keep all state campsites in the Adirondacks open until at least Columbus Day Mr. Marnell Scrim Lake has only two campsites on the lake both state owned they're both closing the week after Labor Day Scrim Lake well, hey, the one in Wilmington stays open until Columbus is on top. It seems so. You want to modify your resolution, Mr. Harrington, that we do a blanket for all state campsites? I will. And everybody's okay with that? Unanimous second still? Okay, thank you. All right. Mr. Manning? Okay. Um, we currently have entered into an agreement, a community block, community development block grant disaster recovery agreement with the state of New York. Uh, that agreement was at $9 million uh, funding that we were to get for disaster recovery. In the original agreement, uh, don't ask me why, the state doesn't put any money in it. You sign a blank agreement, I guess this is a new way of doing things. Afterward, you get amendments and additions to it that uh, uh, plug in the money. Um, therefore, there are two projects currently uh, being undertaken. One is the restoration and flood mitigation of Gulf Brook. Uh, it's for engineering, design, and restoration of about 1,500 linear feet of Gulf Brook. The second one is an Sable Forks water building, uh, reconstruction and relocation, and some work to Rolling Mill Road. Um, therefore, we need, uh, I need a resolution authorizing the execution by the county manager or the county chairman of a first amendment to that to the existing community development block grant disaster recovery subrecipient agreement in the amount of three hundred nineteen thousand four hundred sixty dollars for uh, this juncture engineering fees. So, anyone want to move that? Mr. Scott Zapata, seconded by Mr. Grinnell. Discussion. Mr. Grinnell. No. Mr. Fair. Yeah, just an explanation on this. As we move forward with all these projects, there will be a number of amendments. You know, we'll do this part of the engineering. Then when the next phase comes in, we, we go to bid, we receive prices. So there'll be a huge number of, of, of amendments for both, pro both projects, both teams. Okay, any further discussion on this? If not, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? So carried. Uh, just one last one. Uh, as you know, um, there is a uh, annual event, uh, the Adirondack Canoe Classic, which is the 90-miler canoe kayak race. Um, the, uh, in order for the race to occur, the New York State Department of Transportation has to issue a permit. And as part of the permitting process, uh, anyone who has a roadways or thoroughfares there have to uh, also give their approval. Um, Therefore, uh, there uh, will be some road closures on uh, Route 28, I believe. However, with detours allowed, um, in order to, uh, I was just given this, and the Canoe Classic's coming up quickly in September. Um, I would ask for a resolution approving uh, the permit uh, with respect to the 90 miler, uh, subject to any uh, concerns Chris uh, Garrow might have with respect to the roadways. I want to move that, Mr. Moore. Second. Mr. Gilliland, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carry. That's it. Thank you. That's it. If there's nothing else to come before this board, we stand adjourned.